So let's talk a little bit about the poor pressure of death. So then now we're actually moving into chapter 2, uh, but it's still related to what we've been talking about. Um, the hydrostatic pressure is generally can be well approximated by just the simply the density of water times gravity times the depth at which you're interested in. So this is, again, the pressure that simply a column of water would have at a, de at a given depth. And sometimes we talk about these things in terms of um, a ratio of the pore pressure to the vertical stress. And uh, Zoback uses the lambda to uh, <coughs> characterize that ratio. But the important things are these definitions where, so if when we talk about hydrostatic, the, that ratio is 0 0.44, okay? And this is where we get this es estimate, basically, in, um, you know, 0 0.44 psi per foot uh, is, a, is a good estimate to the hydrostatic pore pressure. Uh, the case of uh, what, what would be called lithostatic uh, would be, in, you know, typically you never actually achieve this state, but lithostatic would be where the ratio is 1. So you have the exact same pore pressure as vertical stress. So we don't typically achieve that, but we can approach it. Okay. So this is a um, this is actually a, a pressure log uh, from Monte Cristo field, which is not not too uh, not too far from us, right? It's it's onshore in Texas, uh, near the Gulf of Mexico. Mexico. Uh, but this is pretty characteristic of what you see in almost all uh, Gulf of Mexico type formations. So what you'll see is an initially hydrostatic, so I'm drawing this line to roughly represent the hydrostatic portion, and you can see that the, the exact there is 0.46 psi per square foot, so it's very, very near what we define as hydrostatic, right? That's the slope of this line. Uh, and then you see a, a, a transition into an overpressure state, so then the pressure as we go down, increases such that here that that ratio is 0.91. So it's a, approaching the lithospheric state, right? And what's interesting, I guess, is that you know the pressures here, uh, you know, they're nearly uh, at this depth. They, they've nearly doubled from the hydrostatic case. So th this is, if you can't read that, that's 14,000. Pure hydrostatic would be a little less than 8,000. So they've nearly doubled. Uh, the pore pressures have nearly doubled, um, which this is a good thing for production, right? If we can just tap into that, then the, then the pressure will help us out, right, without a lot of lift. Of course, when you have these overpressure states, there's also a lot of subsidence when you deplete the reservoir. So as you take, as you take fluid out of the reservoir, you're greatly depleting the pore pressure, and it was sort of in a nice equilibrium state, and now you're depleting the pore pressure, which can cause lots of subsidence or deformation, which then can lead to fracturing or other things, and that can be beneficial or not. Um, you also have just the pore volumes are collapsing associated with this depletion. Okay. So that's characteristic of a, of a Gulf of Mexico reservoir. Uh, this is the last slide I have today. I really got through that fast. Um, anyway, uh, so again, this is this is uh, we're talking about compartmentalization here. Or I wanted to show you one thing about compartmentalization. So again, what I mean by compartmentalization is that you have areas that are that are uh, highly connected, 
separated by areas of impermeability. So, you know, a good a good example would be sand and shale. Right? So if you went through layers of shale, which are basically impermeable, and areas of sand, which are highly connected. So I guess I should have mentioned this earlier. Where you get hydrostatic pore pressures are in areas of high connectivity or high permeability. Right? So when I say high connectivity, there's pores and they're highly connected to each other. Okay? And so there you'll get roughly uniform or, or you know, hydrostatic pore pressures. Okay? Um, and so this is a, a reservoir in, in Egypt. And again, here's your hydrostatic line. And they've defined these compartments. So basically the white areas are, are areas of, of high permeability and the shaded areas are shales. And I guess what's interesting, this is, this is uh, mud weight, but you can infer pore pressure information from it. <coughs> the pore pressure is across, the, uh, across the, the top axis there. And what you'll see is that in each compartment where you have high connectivity, while the pore pressure does increase, the slope of it is roughly at the slope of a hydrostatic. So you get some additional mechanisms that, that cause, you know, between the, the uh, isolation layers that, that cause, you know, this to move to the right or the pore pressure to increase. But then in the, in the areas of high connectivity, the pore pressure increases at a hydrostatic slope. Okay. So next class, we'll talk about some of the mechanisms uh, of comp for, for um, compartmentalization like this. Uh, the, the mechanisms of overpressure. Okay.